In this video, I'm going to show you how to deploy web apps to IPFS using GitHub Actions, following the best practices as of 2025. Now to do this, we're going to use a new GitHub Action that we just launched at Interplanetary Shipyard called Deploy to IPFS Action. This GitHub Action gives you a bunch of things. Beyond the fact that it embraces some of the best practices that we recommend, it also gives you commit status updates with the SID, and it also gives you PR preview deployments. And uh, it also supports Staracha, IPFS Cluster, Kubo, Pinata, and Filebase. So you get a lot of these nice features that you typically get with something like a platform as a service like Vassell or Netlify, except that this is all using open source tooling and with all of the benefits of IPFS. By deploying to IPFS, you get things like easy cacheability because everything is static and uh, immutable. It's very easy to cache. Uh, what's more, users can cache it on their clients. Get verification, which is really important if you're deploying dApps and you want to avoid hacks or all sorts of malicious attacks, as we've seen with the recent Bybit attack on the safe wallet. You also get the ability to use IPFS gateways. And finally, uh, and this is a big aspect of IPFS, you, you get to do peer-to-peer -peer, uh, distribution. In order to follow this guide, there are two requirements. The first is you're going to need a static web app that is on GitHub. And by static web app, that, that's a pretty broad category. So really it means anything that is statically generated and produces a build that can be hosted on any platform without any special server requirements. So this includes WooPress, Nux.js supports static sites, even Next.js, as long as you're doing static site generation. We also have a guide in the docs on how to configure different static site generators so that they produce an output that works well with IPFS. I'm going to link to that in the description. And the second thing you're going to need is either a Storache account. Storache is one of the biggest pinning services. Or if you're self-hosting your own IPFS nodes, you're going to need either a Kubo or IPFS cluster. And for that, you're also going to need to make sure that their RPC endpoint is exposed and is secured. Because the GitHub action is going to actually upload car files. We're going to dive into that in a moment. And in order to upload these car files to your IPFS nodes or to Storacha for that matter, you're going to need one of these. To demonstrate how to use this GitHub action, we're going to take the IPFS SID inspector and we're going to uh, deploy that using this action. This is a very simple single page application and it uses parcel in order to do the build. So let's take a look because we already have a workflow, a GitHub Actions workflow that is doing the build. And this is doing it both for uh, master, but also for all of the pull requests that are opened against master. So this is actually a very, very good starting point. Now, if you're new to this uh, IPFS deploy action, uh, you should always consult with the readme. And here we have the required inputs and some of the optional inputs and there's also a usage example. So as you can see, you know, we already have the uh, trigger events configured for this workflow on the right hand side. And um, we might want to uh, update the name to build and deploy to IPFS so that it's clear. We also want to probably set the permissions explicitly. This is because this action, well, the GitHub deploy, the IPFS deploy action is going to update pull requests with comment and also update, update the commit statuses. Okay, so if I run actually npm run build uh, locally, the output will be into the dist folder. We need to remember this because this is one of the required inputs for the IPFS deploy action. And so once the build has finished, we can actually add an additional step. Now, I mentioned in the beginning of the video that this is a uh, composite action. And the nice thing about composite actions is that they can just be used as a single step within an existing uh, job in your GitHub uh, workflow. So, of course, I'm going to update the path uh, to deploy to be dist. 
This of course depends on the front end or the build process that you're using. And then we have these two keys here. We're gonna start off with Staracha and I'm gonna to need to create a space for this in Staracha and also generate the key and the proof, which I will do in a moment. And of course, pass in the GitHub token. The GitHub token is actually provided automatically by GitHub. Okay, so that was the sort of the basics of setting up this workflow. Now I'm gonna show you how to create the Staracha uh, key and proof. So the first thing you're gonna need to uh, do is create uh, a space. And in order to do a lot of the work with Staracha, you're gonna need the Staracha CLI, uh, which is known as W3. And the first thing you will need to do is create an account after which you will probably want to log in. I'm already logged in, so there's no need for me to log in. So I can go and jump straight ahead and create a space and uh, it'll probably prompt me to give it a name. I'm gonna call it the seed inspector and I'm going to copy this and I will add it to the appropriate account and Great, so I've created a space and I've also got the did for the space. Now the did for the space is how you identify spaces and spaces are how you organize your files and uploads within a Staracha account. So it's pretty much synonymous with a bucket in S3. A single account can have multiple spaces and a space is identified by a did which contains a public key and has a name which we gave uh, SID Inspector. The next step is to create a new key. This is the key that will be used by GitHub Actions, so our CI environment, and uh, creating a proof, essentially delegating upload capabilities to this key. This is all using this UCAN technology, which allows these self-certified uh, permission delegations and authorizations. And so the first step is to use this w3 key create command and then the next step will be to create a delegation to that did and when we create the delegation we need to pass in the did for the key that we just created and i'm going to actually output this into a uh, proof.txt file it's quite long and the output is in base 64. The next step will be to actually set both the uh, key that we created and the proof as secrets in the GitHub repo. So for that, we're gonna go into the settings and secrets and variables and actions and create a new repository secret here. The first one is going to be a storage, storage key. So now that I've set the key and the proof for Staracha as repository secrets, we can actually go ahead and push these changes, commit these changes to the workflow and push them and try this out. So let's go ahead and try to do that. Uh, the first thing is I'm going to add the changes to the workflow and then commit them. And I'm going to actually create a branch for this. And create a pull request. I'm gonna push this pull request straight to the uh, repository. And we have the pull request and I believe that uh, this should already run because it contains the changes to the workflow. So the build runs, nothing special until here. This is the same action, but now we have the deploy to IPFS action as we can see. Well, it seems like it's doing quite a lot of things, but really the main thing it's doing is merkelizing the uh, output, the dist folder into a car file. So it's essentially uh, making the build content addressed and merkelizing it into this Merkle DAG 
um, using UnixFS to represent these files. And essentially this allows us to get all of these nice IPFS features, uh, essentially allowing using one SID to verify the full build. And that seemed to run successfully. And if we reload this, we will actually see that we have now a SID for this step. And we also have this new comment that allows us to preview. Now, if I open the, just the normal gateway link, we should be able to view and there's the SID inspector. In fact, I can take the SID off the build and use that within the inspector. And as you can see, it's a Merkle DAG protobuf, so DAG PB, that's the foundation for all of this Unix FS stuff. So now I've merged this pull request into main and you can see that it's built it for the main branch and that we get this status update. And if you click on the details, it actually links you to the service worker gateway. Okay, so we've successfully deployed uh, our application using a car file to Staracha. Now I think would be a good moment to show how to do this with Kubo or to add Kubo into the mix. So let's take a look at that. In order to upload to Kubo, you're gonna need to set these two inputs to the action, the Kubo API URL and the Kubo API auth. And in order to set up uh, Kubo so that you can upload to it, we actually just recently published a new guide about how to secure your Kubo RPC endpoint uh, with TLS and HTTP auth. So in order to do this, uh, you're gonna need to get a, a TLS certificate. Um, you're gonna need a domain name. So I, I suggest you check out this guide if you plan on uh, self-hosting Kubo because Kubo out of the box is not enough. You're gonna need to set up a reverse proxy, something like Caddy or Nginx, whatever you're familiar with and uh, link a domain. And then the second thing is you, you're gonna want to set up some kind of HTTP authentication for the purposes of uh, this guide. And what I'm going to demonstrate, I just use basic HTTP auth, which uh, Kubo supports out of the box. It's obviously up to you whether you do that on the Kubo layer or on the reverse proxy layer. Um, I'll leave that up to you. Check out this guide. It's in the docs in the guide section about how to set up Kubo RPC with TLS and HTTP auth. Okay, so I already have a Kubo node that is configured with Caddy, basically following this guide. And so the only thing I'm gonna need to do is I'm going to open up the uh, workflow file and so I'll add these two additional inputs, the Kubo API URL and the Kubo API auth. And these are gonna come from the secrets. So I will set these as repository secrets inside the repository. Okay, now that I've added these secrets to the repository, I can go ahead and commit the changes to the workflow. And I will open up a PR for this so that we can make sure it works correctly before merging it. If I open it up, let's have a look. And now the build is done and the car file is uploaded to both our Kubo node and Staracha. So we get that redundancy because we have essentially two providers providing this SID. So before we finish up, a couple of final words. In this video, we looked at how you can use GitHub Actions to deploy static web apps or statically generated sites to IPFS. We looked at this IPFS deploy action and how you can use it and how it supports uh, both self-hosted and pinning services. Uh, we uploaded uh, the car file to Sriracha and Kubo. And uh, before we wrap up, I want to mention also that uh, the action supports IPFS cluster and Filebase and also um, 
pinata. One thing to note about pinata is that because they don't support car uploads yet, as far as I know, they're working on it. When you use pinata with this, you uh, use the pinning API, which means that you're not actually uploading a car. Instead, what you're doing is you're sending an API request asking Pinata to pin the SID. And uh, we don't actually, in the GitHub action, we don't wait for that pin to succeed. Meaning that in the background, Pinata will go and try and retrieve that SID, well, the blocks for that SID from other providers, in our case, Doracha or Kubo node that we're running. So keep that in mind, that may change, but a good way to think about this is that whenever you're pinning data with IPFS, you're either pinning it by SID or by car. If you're pinning it by SID, then you're instructing either the pinning service or your node to retrieve the data itself versus when you upload with a car file, when you pin by car file, you're essentially uploading the data that is already Merkleized. The other thing I wanted to mention is that you can use this action for any asset or any build process where you produce an output. So this doesn't actually have to be a static website. The only thing it needs is a path, a directory that is available within the GitHub action job. And as long as you have that, you can pass that folder, that directory into uh, the action via the path to deploy input. And it will Merkleize that using Unix FS and upload it to IPFS. So keep that in mind because this is quite versatile if you're working with other kinds of artifacts that you may want persisted on IPFS. So that's it for today. In the next video, we're going to take a look at custom domains. As you noticed in this guide, all of the URLs had the SID in the URL. That's nice for when you're developing or for when you want to get, you know, a unique uh, preview for each upload. But obviously, if you want to host this on your own custom domain, that is something that uh, we will cover how to do in the next video and also go into things like DNS link and how that works. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.